a little bells and whistles tool review but before that uh if y'all were wondering why i got oil-based polyurethane and some weathered gray stain i'm gonna tint my poly for the floor to look like it's the inside of the uh NOS preservation facility, as I call it, is going to be modeled after a current Toyota dealership. It's going to have a gray floor. I don't know if it's going to have gray walls or not, but definitely a red stripe somewhere. It looks like a service department or a parts department. So you take oil base interior. This is, this is interior. And you take wood stain. Now it's got to be oil base as well. So you always look for the cleanup instructions. You know, clean up with uh, um, mineral spirits. Sometimes they don't say oil base. I think it's a smoke and mirrors thing with the EPA or something. But this definitely says oil base. And well, this is premium wood stain. And uh, where's the cleanup set application? Cleanup contains mineral spirits. So mix one quart to one gallon. And I'll get my Toyota OEM floor I'm looking for. OEM floor I'm looking for. Always a rhyme. But this one has a reason. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to start out with one gallon and, you know, hit it with... Uh, oil base is always good, man. Never go with, never go with any garbage latex eco products because they won't hold up in the shop environment, bottom line. So, I'm a, I'm a Makita guy. I like the Jap engineering and all, but Milwaukee's impressing me. That Makita hand light has, I don't know, 20 LEDs. The Milwaukee one, three LEDs, but they're within 500 lumens. That little guy right there has a thousand lumens. Um, I can't find the spec. Makita doesn't publish the spec on the handheld drop light, but I saw this little guy. I'm into bells and whistles, man. This metal hook right there sold me on it. And uh, if I could get it out really quick. Uh, there, that metal hook. This one's metal too. And I have another one of these lights, but I'm liking the, uh, the detent head. Feels a little bit better. Makita one's okay, but, uh, you know, um, but this little guy right here, this is why this takes the little foot battery, 12 volt, but watch this, man, mode, that is a thousand lumens, dude, and it has the dimming feature, I really like that, I guess mode is just dimming, too bad it didn't blink, safety light, huh? Well, I want to go see. That's a fully charged battery. I want to go see what it does, man. This ought to be interesting. I'll turn the shop light off. Sorry for the battery. Deal, but here we go. It's a, it's a moonless night. Now, that's just the one, the one feature focus here. Now, let me hit the mode button. that that is intensely bright man if you look at this with your eyes you'll see green spots like a photo flash but uh framing will continue tomorrow framing a roof was always tricky it's a little bit of this and a little bit of that a little give and take but um so far so good i got a triple two by eight beam sauna tubes metal contact all pressure treat you know ground contact this is marine grade pressure treat too i don't screw around with the cheap shit stuff um and <clears throat> everything's been t code and ledger locked with uh fasten masters fasten masters and deckmate screws man are sheer grade steel you can't cut them through them with a sawzall so the outside of the structure is t111 um i'm probably going for a natural finish something called sick and sea tall marine it's an amber brown i can't do the charcoal gray out here i can't have a lego a uh, plastic lego block in my on my property i'm into the fit form and function like my antique lantern 
hanging there. It's a real railroad lantern too. It survived all the rafter frames today, but I'm going with very deep lookouts and returns. This is gonna be a walkway, like a boardwalk here. And I'm gonna keep ladders and long, long NOS parts. Maybe I'm gonna get into axles or something, long tubular stuff. But uh, there'll be a front porch out here, um, four and a half feet coming out, something scribed around my, my maple tree after I trim it. And uh, I'm gonna have a deep eave with all exposed post and beam, um, traditional construction and carpentry, like you would see out in Colorado and Utah. I've been hanging on to these suckers for about 15 years. These are pulled out of Cornhill Street. George Washington resided in this uh, residential um, unit for like two or three months. It's documented during the um, Revolutionary War and lead up to it and after. But these are 1774, 1776 confirmed era. It's all heart pine and uh, Somewhere along there, you can see the hand-hewed cut nails. I think I've probably pulled them all out, but um, it had plaster and lath put on it, but hand-hewed cut nails are, uh, they're, they're made by hand in a blacksmith forge. But this wood has a story. And there's a four by four. Um, there's, they've had a saw pit, but there's hand, uh, hand-hewed ax marks on it where they, you know, they struck it and then they pulled the uh, the elliptical blade towards them. These are handmade handmade beams. They're two inches nominal by like nine inches nominal. That's gonna be the whole structure. I'm gonna, um, I'm either gonna media blast this stuff or I'm just gonna take a wire brush to it, but then soak the heck out of it with the sick and sea tall and preserve it. But it's gonna be exposed heart pine. You could do that with the old sappy woods, you know? Um, but it's gonna it's gonna look more like a traditional barn outside and then the modern fit form and function and feel of uh, NOS preservation I got a um, no air conditioning planned I read on the internet and done some serious study with Denso and their uh, climate control products with my rep Denso rep and a dehumidifier plopped up maybe in that corner so it could drain out naturally and air stop everything and uh you, you with it air stopped um you know it'll suck it dry as long as everything's held off the ground by six inches and you have a circulating fan like a box fan or something like that so there'll be a circulating fan on the ground a grade inside the platform and then a dehumidifier up top and you get a swirling function and that'll permit any corrosion or moisture whatsoever. Everything's been glued, screwed, tattooed, and uh, against insect um, infiltration. I use Tongue and Groove at Vantech, which has a weather rating of one year. Um, I was gonna go with two by six framing, but two by fours are good enough. Um, no plans to insulate it yet. Um, it will eventually get electrical. I got a skylight going in um, with, a, with a crank, it opens. <laughs> Got that at a, in a two windows, uh, 20 inches wide by 48 inches tall, double hungs. I've been, I've been squirreling away. I don't know if everybody does lattice at their house, but snow fence you get at the farm supply store. If you could, it would sick and see tall marine. It's a it pretty much a lifetime product. Um, screw lattice, man. That's too, that's too foo foo for me. Uh, snow fence rocks and it does the same thing, you know, I think it's more heavy duty and it's you could put it up in an hour versus cutting lattice um, That comes in a roll like that, but I always think of snow fence when you think of lattice. It's a it's a really a crafty look um, There's my double hungs. <laughs> they were a display at the local lumber store Johnson's lumber and uh, 75 bucks for the pair but peach tree is a high-end brand, but really what sold it on is their stain grade inside. You know, they're not white or t t a finger joint. They're s it's solid. And uh, yeah, sure, I'll open the doors, open the windows on a nice day, but probably they'll stay shut. But the fact that it's stain grade and not white was really a turn on and 75 bucks for a pair of aluminum clad windows. That's all metal cladding. Um, it's not plastic.
Peachtree is really a hot, 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 high-end, uh, you know, the LX package of uh, windows and doors. I got Anderson sliders, two fixed panels in the center is a movable panel. So it's all glass on the, on the short side facing the southern exposure. So I, you know, I get the, uh, the winter warmth and then, uh, you know, the summer, the summer heat will come in and help um keep the parts dry as well you know anti-humidity is the key um so um as you can see there's a reason i need the the, the facility uh <clears throat> this is my shop right now it's a mess but um my basement is now uh NOS is a parts department and you know, it's my, I need production, but that's the trim package. I've been packaging, squirreling away uh, anything in, unique and interesting for many years. And I've got the entire trim package in cedar, mahogany, Australian cypress, uh, red cedar, yellow cedar. There's some oak. Um, <laughs> there's some, some heart pine for my window sills inside. You know, I've got, I've been really pack ratting Got some unique panels, some stair treads, solid fur. It's all ambered out. That'd be a cool shelf. We got some tongue groove. I've got tons and tons of tongue groove yellow pine from my various projects. And, and do, I do everything stain grade, like stain grade, cabinet grade. I don't, I only paint the walls. All my trim is wood or I, I fill in the ceilings with wood. Um, I'm not really a paint grade guy. Um, cabinet grade framing is kind of what where my forte was when I was left Toyota and was a carpenter for 12 years. I got my Maryland State certification, master trim carpenters, I guess your license you call it. So they know you could walk the walk, but uh, down here, if you can see those two beams, they're four nominal inches by eight nominal inches and they're uh, 15 feet long and they're solid fur. It's not engineered lumber. That's gonna be the beam over the porch and uh, the returns back into the structure. Um, so it'll be a, a f and they're already pre-finished. Um, I was gonna use it for the header over the sliders, but you really won't get to see it. These are some unique pieces of wood. I've got oak in here. This oak piece came out of the Cornhill Street structure and uh, where George Washington stayed here in Annapolis, Maryland. And that's like a, that's what they use for for framing lumber. That's like two and a half inches by like mm, four inches. Um, it's it's not an like inch and a half by three and a half. It's like two and a quarter by whatever they measured back then. They used some weird, you know, weird uh, calculations, but that's a solid oak stud. And uh, I don't know if it's red oak or white oak, but um, the, you know, that's, that's what I'm going for. I'm just gonna, yeah. <laughs> sorry for the spit, but they, that polyurethane will, you know, bring the bring the light out, bring the mineral staining of the iron oxide hand-hued nails. So, so I'm going for man. This whole rack has to come out and go in the other shed because, well, parts department must move on. So, um, yeah, there's a reason I'm doing it, and maybe this <laughs> it says something, but uh. I got two 200 amp panels and then the garage shop has a 100 amp sub panel. I'm gonna put another, I'm gonna run power to the NOS facilities, but you know, that's step one baby steps. But um, yeah, file cabinets work great for storing parts. Uh, if anyone has any cabinets like this, um, uh, at Drake, hook me up with these library card catalogs and I keep all my bolts in them, you know? They're bang on in file cabinets, man. <laughs> You laugh at the signs, but uh, things things get moved around, you know? So, you know, they're deep. They're really deep. Um, and they hold a lot of cool stuff, man, you know? Um, so, I mean, deep, deep as you go, you know? Can't, uh, can't have enough thermostat housing, you know? Especially the new number twos. Anyone notice that the thermostat housing has changed from a number one to a number two? Um, I tried to polish one, but this is the 2F4 bolt housing. Clearly heavier, clearly thicker casting, and uh, some changes in the machinery. So 
they updated the mold for whatever reason and these are more precise too but if you're into the 2f engine or me i know these aren't 3fe but this number two has always been a number one it changed uh made in japan number twos and it's clearly clearly a heavy duty design and there's a little bit more um precision machining i've noticed i, I compared them apples to apples and i always want the number twos um I don't know if they're available in the USA or not, but this is an oil cooler equipped one. Um, and I got the oil cooler equipped caps too, the service caps. And then I restore the uh, 3FE ones um, with some various Skunk Works tactics. Um, these are pretty cool uh, for file cabinets. Watch this. Boom, I get three Planet boxes or keep my switches. And these are these are tight, man. If I could find more of these, I could put nine Plano tackle boxes up there, packed with pull switches, man. You know these cabinets, are spring loaded ones, man. I would love my whole outfit to be them. But anyway, enough chatty matty. Um, one last thing. If anybody's interested in this, send me a PM. Fine power tools. Mm. I don't know if anybody wants it send me a pm um you could have it um i've got some i've got toyota garb and makita and hitachi garb ready for the nos thing the fine tool sign isn't really uh isn't really me but one little factoid in my house thing see the stair that's the stair stringer that goes up to the kitchen and the living quarters here those are an option on my build sheet for my house from 1961 and they're preserved, they're jelly jar shelves. It was an option. They paid $100 to get somebody to make these out of scraps. Uh, maybe, no, maybe it was less. Maybe it was $10 a shelf. I'm not sure, but it, the, the word 10 or 100 stair shelf, but one, two, three, four, five, and then there's two under there. But they're simply scraps and it's all hand built. Um, and that's an original bag, the ball mason jars. And, and this bag was in the house when I bought it um, many years ago, but look, <laughs> Acme. I haven't seen a smack me in a while. That's what we used to call Acme. We used to run down the aisles and smack the cereal boxes for G.I. Joe action figures back in the day. But yeah, if you have shelves under your stair treads, that's for jelly jar preserves. And it's an option. All hand built, man. Back in the day, no power tools here. It's all hand drives. I wonder who swung those hand drive nails on a hot, sweaty day. Not I. Toy Matt over and out.